To these shores in 1150 came Richard Coeur de Lyon. Merchants came here, their carracks laden with the riches of the Levant. Built upon a rock as a bastion against seaborne invasions, here stands the Pearl of the Adriatic, Dubrovnik. It is the end of the summer season and there is little activity in and around Dubrovnik's harbour this morning. But the daily boat is sailing. She's one of the poet class. Boats which run to and from the ports of the Dalmatian coast. on board are excited to be traveling but like Jean-Jacques here they are sad too for behind them they leave Dubrovnik and all the gaiety and richness of a summer festival my name's Kenneth Wright that's me with the pipe and there are Zaga and Misha Yugoslavia and in love here's Robert from Canada and if he'd stayed in Dubrovnik he too would have been in love And there in the stern, Jean-Jacques. Five visitors to Dubrovnik, and each with his own memories. My name is Robert Ramsey. I joined a crowd, thinking of nothing in particular, when, bingo, I found myself in a ceremony that goes back to the days of Dubrovnik's medieval republic. Between the 17th century church of Sveti Vlaho and the 16th century Sponza Palace a long time ago, the crowds gathered to watch the hoisting of this same flag, the original flag of Dubrovnik's republic. And in those days they heard the orders and proclamations of the Senate and the Rector. Tonight, the rector declares this summer festival open. And good times begin all over again. Doves are a symbol from the play Dubravka, a symbol of the liberty bought by the patricians of the old Republic of Dubrovnik. Napoleon and Hitler grounded these doves, but tonight they fly again in liberty. And from the tongues of the people on the steps of Sveti Vlaho, the hymn of freedom surges. A lot of Canadians and Americans figure on doing a Columbus in reverse when they light upon these beauty spots of Central Europe. excitement of the pageantry of the night, 
The beach is a good place for what I came here to do, to relax. But after the crowds of last night, feeling just a little lonely. Hmm, she looks okay. She looks okay, too. Oh, well, may as well take a swim. Seems so lonely down here under the water. After all, there's always a fish or two to talk to. Or a grumpy octopus arguing with a lobster. fun in being on your own. It's me for the crowds again. Split and Dubrovnik have been playing water polo against each other on and off for years. With all these beaches along the Dalmatian coast and the weather always so fine, there's no wonder that their favorite summer game is water polo. And if sunshine and water make water polo the national game, it figures that in the sunny, humid regions behind the beaches, the national fruit of Yugoslavia should be grapes. And if I'm going to feel lonely, what better spot to do it in than out here in the valley near Chilipi, down the coast southeast of Dubrovnik, in the heart of the vineyards. Grapes, Proshek is made. Each Sunday, the people of Kanavli climb the hill to church, wearing the traditional national costume. Photographing these beautiful girls is quite a problem. They are shy of strangers. This Dubrovnik folk dance is called Linjo. They were dancing like this to the music of the Lyritsa in the 15th century boom days of the port Dubrovnik. Back home we have the barn dances. Here they have the lingjo and this other dance, a Croatian dance called the Shaking Dance. The Lada group is the most famous group of Croatian dancers and singers.
The energy of these dancers is astounding. They rehearse like this all day and then give a full performance in the evening. And talking about the evening performance, I'd better have a bath and get changed. Arrow the Joker was written by Yakov Gotovats and first performed in 1935. Misha drops from a haystack into a crowd of girls working in a field and pretends to be Aero, fallen from heaven. The girl, Yula, falls in love with him and they elope. we see of the lovers, for they return to the village and are reconciled with the girl's father. Of course, the story ends with the whole village dancing in celebration of the reunion. After the performance, a walk along the quay. All along the strand, the fishermen put out at night to fish by lamp's light. The night has a magic quality, and I could hope that anything might happen, that a boat might bring me a fair-haired companion, and we might be rowed across the water to the sound and the source of the music. Stroke of luck finding this place, the Labyrinth. It's the only nightclub open until the small hours where you can get a drink and where two lonely people can talk and dance. I came to Dubrovnik through Montenegro by car. You need a pretty good engine to get up some of those mountain passes, especially the Lovchen Road, 
climbing like a stairway over the Gulf of Qatar. In 1813, an Englishman, Captain George Host, was made a Knight of the Order of the Bath for dragging naval guns up this mountainside. These mountains around Kotor are indifferent to the heat of the sun. They dried out long ago. The rocks on them are as dead as the stones of the houses of the dead town of Perast. Only a few houses of Perast are still inhabited by human beings. Weeds and the ghosts of the past occupy the rest. The glorious past in which the town never succumbed to the invasions of the Turks. St. Stefan was an ancient village in splendid isolation in the bay. A causeway has now been built down which painters make their pilgrimage. This then was the route I chose to approach Dubrovnik. Throughout history, Dubrovnik has had to rely on its walls for protection against invasion. Parts of this wall were built as far back as the 7th century. In 1806, Napoleon wiped out the Republic of Dubrovnik. Foreign rulers appeared in the town after 1,000 years of independence. The aristocrats of Dubrovnik held council. They decided not to breed. The ladies went into nunneries. The gentlemen committed suicide. And the doors of their great mansions were closed. Some of the buildings have since become hospitals and hotels. And Dubrovnik has regained her freedom under the banners of Yugoslavia. The starting point of the tram route that runs in Dubrovnik, at a fare of only 10 dinars, that's Tuppence Hapney, is the Pila Gate. Pope Pius II sent money to build it. The statue in the niche is of Sveti Flaho, or St. Blaise, the patron saint of Dubrovnik. Pila Gate stands at one end of the main street, the Stradun. The Stradun was built where once a canal separated Dubrovnik into halves. Designed and built as a whole, the Stradun is the centre of the social life of the town. And of course with its marketplace, the centre of bargaining and of trade. During the summer months, Dubrovnik is packed with tourists who, like me, come for the summer festival. And wherever you walk on the streets, you come upon groups of artists taking a stroll, relaxing before the evening's performances. The Rape of Lucretia by Benjamin Britten is performed on this platform 200 feet above the sea, 
against the magnificent ramparts of the Louvre Nats fortress standing on a rock. Audiences come from all over the world, the Earl and Countess of Harwood, for example. What better setting for Verdi's opera Othello than the Revelin fortress which since 1538 has risen grimly to the defence of the old harbour? British opera, Italian opera, Croatian dances, artists from Belgrade, Zagreb, Hungary, truly an international festival. Kendall Taylor brought from England to play in the rector's palace. the dreadful summit of the cliff that beetles o'er his base into the sea. Hamlet in Louvrianat's fortress. To be or not to be. Bit ili ne bit? To je pitanje. Je li dičnije sve strelice i metke silovite sudbine u srcu podnositi ili zgrabiti oruđe? Oduprijet se i moru jada kraj učinit. Umrijet, usnut, ništa više. I usnuši do konča crca bol i prirodnih još tisuć potresa što baština su tijeli. To je kraj da živoga poželiš. Umrijet, these are the things that I will remember. I am Jean-Jacques. I live in an hotel off the Boulevard Rochoir in Paris 5. 
here on these magnificent steps, I might almost be back in Montmartre. Oh, what a place this is for observing the ever-changing patterns of perspective. The air high above the roofs of Dubrovnik is crisp, pure. The rows of houses and the streets gather into the stradoon like the ribs into the spine of a gigantic rayfish. I came all the way from Paris to attend this festival and to see these paintings. They are by Vlaho Bukovac in the gallery of the painter in Safdat. This one is called The White Slave. This one, Carnival in Savdat. This is the painter himself, Bukovac. In the grounds of this mausoleum built by Ivan Mestrovich, here lie the remains of Bukovac and several other painters. For me, this holiday is the pilgrimage to the shrine of a great painter. It is an opportunity to see and assess the value to a modern painter of some of the best, some of the most uniform architecture and sculpture of this period. There are two water fountains at opposite ends of the main street. This one is the fountain of Onofrio de la Cava. Both of them I found equally impressive. That painting behind me above the altar is attributed to Titia, the Virgin and the Saints, painted by the 15th century Dubrovnik painter Nikolai Boljdarovic. Titian Saint Magdalene. and St. Catherine by Palma Vecchio. Wonderful paintings, all of them. These old masters are a constant source of inspiration. Mm. Painters here seem to begin younger than even in France. Yes, he has already a good sense of perspective. Oh, yes, there is much to be seen and done in Dubrovnik. Many, many impressions to be recorded. Many sketches to make. I had to sketch this old man. He reminded me so much of a character I had seen the previous evening in a play by Marin Dritsch. Dundo Marge, Uncle Marge. Marin Dostic was a contemporary of Shakespeare and a famous predecessor of our own Molière theatrical tradition. During the day, the ordinary commerce of Dubrovnik's market goes on here in the Gundelik Square. But for the evening's performance, 
of the Renaissance comedy Dune de Marier, this Gundelich Square is an ideal setting. The house there is real, hmm? and only the steps and the balustrade are theatrical props. In the plot, which is too complicated for me to describe, the old man, Pocillo, is a sort of ponderous, an arranger of love affairs. And of course, an invitation for a drink is his reward. Pomet speaks an ode to what he values most, <laughs> his stomach. <laughs> like Dubrovnik itself, the entertainment of the summer festival contrasts the ancient and the modern, the old and the young, the gravity of high drama and opera, and the levity of John Wright's puppets. Children are equally amused, be it by a folk dance or classical opera. My name is Zaga. I met Misha on the first holiday I ever had without my parents. We found a wonderful man to row us across the inlet. He is Dubrovnik's oldest inhabitant. He talked to us about the history of the town and told us many stories about the old palaces. Maximilian Palace at Lokrum, legend, and our oldest inhabitant says that Maximilian lived with his wife Caroline, and when he went to war, she waited for him every day on the coast. How often must she have walked these gardens waiting for his return? The old man asked me if I would be as faithful to Misha. They say that 
that this villa at Gruz, Sukacevich Palace, is the most beautiful in all Dubrovnik. This I can believe. Our old man was a well of information about the past. This pharmacy was founded in the Franciscan cloister in 1318. book of medicines is still on show. I met Misha in a youth camp here on the water's edge. Our fellow campers had come out to sunbathe and everyone was in good spirits. Every evening we said goodbye to the boatman on the headland and every day he would be waiting for us again after lunch. Everyone soon got to know that Misha and I had paired off together. Of course, they made fun of us in the camp, but we didn't mind. They called us Romeo and Juliet. But they were only jealous. We liked to get away from the campus. Here in Gradus Park is a wonderful place to walk during the afternoon and in the evening an ideal setting for the festival performances. Here we saw Ton Colonja as Orestes and that incomparable actress Maria Sirnobori as Iphigenia. Brate i sestro, koji svoju krasnu svjetlost po danu i po noći ljudima na širokome nebu palite, a pokojnima ne smijete sjati, ospasite sad, brata mog i mene. Poznaš li nas i ovaj sveti gaj i svjetlost ovom mrtvima što ne sja? Tegli nas krepko, nismo prazne sjenke. Slušaj što kažem, čuj me, dođi k sebi. Slobodna srca, daj da prvi put na tvojim grudima čistu radost nađemo. O Bozi, dajte da i ja unaruću sestre i drugu svom na grudima uz punu zahvalnost ono što mi dadete uživat mogu i zadržati. Ne okljevajte jer je vrijeme kratko. Tek vjetar što će jedra da nam nadmenek svu nam radost na olim podnese. Hajdmo, tu treba brze odluke. Every evening there is something to see at the festival. This ballet, the Giavo Uselo, the Devil in the Village, is to the music of our well-loved composer, Fran Lotka. Mirko and Jela are in love.
The devil ruins the love affair of the peasant boy and girl by making Mirko unfaithful to Yella. The devil finally takes Mirko into hell. But Mirko escapes and is reunited with Yella. Shakespeare could not have wished for a better setting for his Midsummer Night's Dream. Here, Irene Kolesar plays Hermia, and Milan Pujic is Lysander. Pa nek nas kušnja uči strpljivosti. Čuj me, Hermija, ako li me ljubiš, ukradi si iz doma oca svog, jer čekat ću te sutra uvečer u onoj šumi midu izvan grada, gde jedno sretoh te s Helenom, gdje slaviš majsku slavu jutarnju. Ja kunem ti se, dragi Lisandre. Kupidovim najjačim kunem lukom, svim zakletvama, muškim prekršenim i ženskim vas da vjerno izvršenim. Na mjesto koje sada rekli ti, bez sumnje sutra, Srećemo sa njim. Podrži riječ. And for us, after the performance, no nightclub, no puppets, but a walk by the sea in the moonlight and the soft sound of music. This I will remember. Five of us with rich memories of a summer festival. Jean Jacques returns to art school in Paris. Robert goes home to Toronto. And I to my family. And I wonder what each one of us will remember the most. <laughs>